GHK-CU, copper peptide. You're 34, and you just noticed your hands look older than your face. Or maybe you caught your reflection in a car window at the wrong angle and didn't recognize your own jawline. So you're here, researching peptides at midnight, because the alternative is admitting that time is winning and you don't have a plan. GHKCU is where most people start because it's the only peptide that wasn't invented to sell you something. Discovered in human blood plasma in the 1970s, back when researchers were studying wound healing in trauma patients, not marketing anti-aging serums to people having quiet breakdowns about their neck texture. They found this tripeptide concentrated in areas where skin was actively repairing itself, three amino acids bound to copper. Your body already makes this. You just make less of it every year, which is one of several dozen reasons you're watching your face slowly betray you. The copper is doing most of the work. Your skin needs it for the enzymes that build collagen and elastin. Without copper, fibroblasts just sit there like employees whose manager quit. GHKCU delivers copper directly while the peptide acts as a homing signal. But here's what makes it different. It removes damaged proteins first. Your skin has been accumulating broken collagen and elastin since your first sunburn. Molecular garbage that doesn't do anything except take up space. GHKCU triggers proteases that clear it out so functional proteins can actually replace it. You're not just building on top of structural decay. You're demolishing first, then rebuilding. That's why it actually works for sun damage and acne scarring instead of just making bold claims on a product page. The studies are legitimate because they're old. Before the current peptide gold rush, before every skincare company needed a proprietary complex to justify $180 serums. This was studied for actual medical applications, wound healing, tissue regeneration, things that matter. The problem is copper peptides are chemically unstable. They deactivate completely in the presence of vitamin C or acids. Use them alone at night or accept that you're funding a cosmetics company's profit margin for no biological benefit. And some people's skin just rejects copper. Redness, irritation, inflammation that makes you look worse than when you started. You'll know within three days. This is the peptide for damage control. If your skin is fine, this is overkill. If you're staring at sunspots that won't fade and texture that suddenly appeared overnight, this might be the only topical that actually does something. Matrixyl, the peptide that made peptides a luxury market. When Sederma published the Matrixyl research in the early 2000s, skincare companies realized they could charge retinoid prices without the irritation, purging, prescription requirements, or the three-month adjustment period where customers look worse and quit. Matrixyl is five amino acids chained to palmitic acid, a fatty acid that helps it penetrate your skin barrier. The mechanism is clever bordering on manipulative. It mimics fragments of broken collagen. Your skin detects these molecular fragments and interprets them as damage. Emergency protocols activate, fibroblasts panic, and start overproducing collagen and elastin to fix structural problems that don't exist. You're gaslighting your skin into thinking it's falling apart, so it overcompensates with repair. Studies showed 44% reduction in wrinkle depth at 0.005% concentration over two months. That's legitimate. Now, Matrixel or its variants are in everything that costs more than $60 and wants to sound scientific. Matrixel 3000 combines this with two other peptides because pharmaceutical companies learned they could patent combinations after original patents expired. The research shows marginal improvement, not enough to stress about which version you're using. The catch is time. Matrixel works on a 12-week minimum because you're building new structural proteins molecule by molecule in tissue that's simultaneously aging. If you're photographing your face daily, looking for changes, this will drive you insane. If you can commit to three months without needing constant validation, it delivers. This is the foundation anti-aging peptide. Everything else is supplementary. Palmitoyl Tripeptide 1 and Palmitoyl Tetrapeptide 7. The two halves of Matrixel 3000 separated out and marketed individually because the industry realized they could charge more by fragmenting combinations and selling them as targeted treatments. Tripeptide 1 stimulates collagen types 1 and 3, structural collagen that prevents crepe paper texture, plus fibronectin, the adhesive protein that holds your extracellular matrix together. It also inhibits MMPS, 
the enzymes that break down collagen. You're building faster while destroying slower. Tetrapeptide 7 handles the invisible problem, inflammation. It suppresses interleukin-6, a pro-inflammatory cytokine that quietly dismantles your skin's structural integrity while you're worried about fine lines. You can't feel chronic inflammation. It doesn't announce itself. It just steadily degrades collagen, thins your dermis, and accelerates every visible sign of aging you're spending money to prevent. It's been happening for years and you didn't know. Combined studies show measurable improvements that exceed either peptide alone. The synergy is legitimate, not just marketing copy. You almost never find these separated. They're formulated together in Matrixel 3000 products because they genuinely work better combined. Argyrolane, Botox in a bottle, is both technically accurate and a financially lucrative distortion that has made cosmetics companies extraordinarily wealthy, selling hope to people who want results without needles. Argyrolyne inhibits the snare complex, proteins responsible for muscle contraction. When you make facial expressions, neurotransmitters trigger this complex. Muscles contract, skin folds, wrinkles deepen. Argyrolyne disrupts that cascade. The muscle contracts less forcefully. The wrinkle forms less deeply. The difference from actual Botox, it's topical, not injected, so it only affects surface level contractions. Your face still moves, you're just dampening the signals. The effect is subtle softening, not frozen foreheads. Studies show 10% concentration reduces wrinkle depth by approximately 30% after 30 days. The problem is most serums contain 1-2% to because our Argyroline is expensive and concentration disclosures aren't regulated. You're paying for therapeutic language but getting homeopathic dosing. It only works on dynamic wrinkles, lines caused by repeated muscle movement, forehead lines, crow's feet, the vertical line between your eyebrows. It does nothing for static wrinkles, volume loss, or general deterioration of skin quality. This is a 30% solution to a problem Botox solves at 80%. Whether that gap matters depends on how desperate you are to avoid admitting you're considering injectables. Snap8 Argyrolyne's chemically enhanced successor, marketed as more powerful, because longer peptide chains sound more advanced to people who read ingredient lists at Sephora. Snap8 works identically, disrupting the snare complex, but supposedly penetrates better. One study claims 10% reduced wrinkle depth by 63% in 28 days, which is suspiciously high and probably represents optimal conditions with hand-selected participants. The honest truth, the real-world difference between properly dosed Argyrolyne and Snap8 is marginal. The distinction matters more to the patent office than to your forehead. Most products combine both at inadequate doses and call it advanced dual peptide technology, which is just expensive hedging. If neither one is present at therapeutic concentration, combining them doesn't create effectiveness through addition. Same limitations apply. Expression lines only, high concentration required, subtle results. If our gear line disappointed you, Snap8 won't redeem the category. Polymetoil Tripeptide 5 – A different pathway to the same destination. Instead of mimicking collagen breakdown, Tripeptide 5 directly stimulates TGF-beta, transforming growth factor beta, one of the most powerful collagen-inducing signals your body produces. TGF-beta tells fibroblasts to synthesize collagen without elaborate molecular deception. Lab studies show 5% concentration increased collagen production, by 180% in controlled conditions, which sounds remarkable until you account for penetration barriers and the complexity of living skin versus cultured cells. The research base is thinner than Matrixels because this came later and pharmaceutical companies fund studies supporting their own patents, not competitors. What exists suggests it works but doesn't prove superiority. The theoretical advantage is combining multiple collagen-stimulating peptides working through different mechanisms. Matrixel tricks your skin into panic repair. Tripeptide 5 directly signals production. Combined, you're hitting collagen synthesis from multiple angles. Whether it actually compounds results meaningfully or just compounds your monthly skincare expenditure is the question nobody with funding wants to answer definitively. Love Facial the third muscle relaxing peptide, differentiated by mechanism but not by results impressive enough to justify its existence as a distinct product category. 
Lufacil inhibits acetylcholine release, the neurotransmitter that signals muscles to contract. Argyrolide and SNAP8 disrupt contraction after the signal is sent. Lufacil stops the signal from transmitting. Different mechanism, similar outcome. Marginally reduced expression lines. One study found 20% reduction in wrinkle depth after 28 days, which is measurably worse than Argyrolene's 30%. Most research is in vitro, cultured skin cells in lab conditions, not actual human faces. Effective concentration isn't well established. Products contain 1 to 10% with no consensus on what actually works versus what looks impressive on a label. The only theoretical advantage is layering multiple muscle relaxing mechanisms and hoping cumulative inhibition exceeds any single approach. Maybe it does. Maybe you're just using three mediocre solutions instead of committing to one effective one or admitting you need actual Botox.